Don't you know that the music should be solemn? Go, we're recording. <laughs> Listen to that voice. Hey, wow, what a freak, huh? Wow. Look at that. You look like a you're gone, young. You, you took 20 years off. I don't you're know. Already what I, looking 40. I took you're 20 pounds of beard off, I'll tell you that. No, I, I mean, it's, it's so weird. Eh? Little gray hairs. Uh, listen, son. Um, see the grays. You can see I'm in a, a new spot. I'm in my another home. You're in the I states. Been in. I haven't been to America in eleven months. Welcome, welcome wow. me back. Wow, amazing. Wait, welcome I back. I can't wait to have a walk with you up in the hills. Coming. Yeah, up we're soon. in. The, we're in the same city. In them hills. We're gonna do a little walk in them hills. Six feet away. Masks seven, on, baby. Seven, just in case. Seven and a half. <laughs> Isn't this, isn't this amazing that you have not been here in 11 months yeah. in your home? You haven't been yeah. like, this is your, I know you live in both Canada and America, but like you spend the majority of your time in Los Angeles. In LA. Yeah. No, I haven't been here in 11 been home months. In 11 months. I, I left in March, St. Patty's day, 2020. Um, I've been hanging out with my mother-in-law and my wife and, and not seeing a lot of people, uh, you know, we're going to bring on uh, His Highness coming up in 20 minutes Can't here. Wait. Talk yeah, to him We're going to get morning. right into it because yeah, um, let's go. Without further ado, we do have we do have our man coming on and we don't want to waste time on that. So um, I'm not even going to get into the beautiful purple jumper. I'm wearing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, these are my guys at Roots of Fight who I uh, absolutely love and I'm giving them a shout out. Um, OK, so. The, this episode is called Old Bones. Juice isn't in it. That's fine. He's not in a lot of those first season and second season ones. Um, coincidentally, have to point this out. Tommy says previously on. Yeah. So Chib says it coincidentally, perfect. which is perfect, perfect right? Perfect. Serendipitous. Perfect. Um, Great. Very good work. So the show opens up with that rock star moment. Jax has got no helmet on. He's got Tara on the back with her helmet on. The rock music is playing. Um, it's it's full on easy rider. Like here we go, cool as they come. Yeah. Um, and then as he passes, he passes those old bones that are being dug up. Yeah. So we're already setting up for like something. Something's going down, right? Um. He gets there and he knows something's off. It reminded me right out of the scene of one of my favorite films, Goodfellas, where he's like, what's happening? And he knows. And she, the car, and it's Cone, who we come to find out his name is Joshua. Um, oh, good for you. Nice pickup there, Theo. Thank you. Thank you. They mentioned agent like agent douchebag. But yeah, go ahead. Agent, agent the worst. <laughs> so he comes and he does something which I never knew you can do, sticking the blade into a front of a car. To get the uh, the fluid out, the antifreeze. It's, it's called the radiator. Yeah, you radiator. put it in the radiator and it all runs out. Can't drive the car. It'll you overheat. Think that's possible. Yeah. What it usually is possible. Oh yeah. What what you usually do? Not that I would know, but what you usually do is use a screwdriver, and you just jam a screwdriver in that radiator, and that rad will drain, and you'll turn the car on, and you'll overheat within ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. So he did that. So obviously he's not going anywhere. He has to call an Uber. Oh. There's no Ubers back then. He's got to call a cab or something. <laughs> okay. A tow truck company, baby. But he says a great line in there where he says, are you threatening a federal agent? He says, no, I'm threatening you. It's a great line. Great. great. Um, Could you believe how tall he was? Jake Carnes? Yeah. He's, a, he's like a seller. He's, he's a stock. He, he's, he's a tall stalker. He's I really mean, good he, he he dwarfed over Charlie. Like, he what did. that? Charlie's like what six one? Does he have lips in his shoes? Charlie's six one for sure. Like, six one. so Carnes is like six two, six yeah. three. Oh I yeah. I gotta tell you, that was so hard. I'm like, you know, on a good day, I'm five eleven, right? But you know, probably five. On a, I say that because, like, if I'm wearing shoes, the right shoes, I'm like five eleven. <laughs> I've but, seen you, know, you in bare feet, son, and you, yeah, you come up so, to no. I'm Op Opie always gets on me, and he says you're five ten, but. Yeah. I'm going to say 5'11". <laughs> we had a show that is very uncommon in Hollywood. We had a show of giants. Tall, Everybody tall was people. tall. Tall. Everybody was tall. Ron was shrinking. but well, Ron, was shrinking. Ron just got the hunchback coming on a little bit yep. because, you know, he's such a talent. He's such a dinosaur. Yeah, he would lean forward he, you know, a lot. But you have yeah. tiny, 
Opie. You know, these guys were all giants. Charlie, Tommy, me. Yeah. Uh, Everybody's Booney, over Booney, six. Booney, Everybody's over six it. one. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, it made me feel so insecure when I was on there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need any help with that, son. No, it had nothing to so, do with it. I know, I had it. So, <laughs> okay. So Jax goes there, um, and then he goes and sees Hale right away. They get in each other's face. They're very close. I always think when I see two actors really close, like I always have breath spray on me, always, wherever I go. Yeah, Altoids always. for me, as you know. You have Altoids. Yeah. I have my yeah. little uh, Listerine spray. Yeah. Even like you here, I do it. Yeah, I can just smell you for the fact me. that, just in case. Yeah, just, just in case, case you could smell anything. <laughs> Tommy will but pick I'm, up on it right away. Yeah, I'm always conscious of it. And then the big reason I carry this, which is a spray, is I'll hand it to people, like yeah. people I'm talking to. I'll I always say them. you don't need one, but you yeah, you'll well, take them out. You always well, do that. Yeah, you when we're talking to people, you always you don't need one. I go, but you want one. Play. Yeah, and now you can't even let them put their hand in there and grab it. You oh. have to like hand it to them, right? <laughs> but I will literally hand this to someone and not say anything. I'll go, here you go. And they're like, oh, <laughs> and that's me saying like, whatever's going on in this dragon mouth of yours has to cease. <laughs> it's got a cease and desist right now. Oh yeah. my good. My eyebrows are going flying off from some people's <laughs> breath. Point All right, is, where are we? Jackson Hale are very close. Hale says, I'll take care of it. Um. Yeah, and Hale, and actually Hale said uh, after the title, uh, you know, we got some old bones out on 44. Old bones. Yeah, answer out on says it, yeah. and then they leave. Or answer, yeah. Answer says it, yeah. So we know we have a problem. Um, then we show Half Sack uh, boxing, I, right? I, I, I don't remember any of this. Look at this. I know. We got, look at this. He's already in the waiting room. Can oh you, can no! You imagine this. He's so he's, excited. He's so excited. That's amazing. I, no, we can't, we he, can't bring him in just yet. We're talking about the episode. Okay, but but he'll he'll wait. Tommy will wait. He'll wait. Let's he probably me. guarantee you he had somebody set it up for him. There's no way he knows how to. Do <laughs> I know. That. I would. I would need yeah. someone. That's why he I have five assistants. Went, hey, get he in here. Set this <laughs> up. Daughter, Turn the phone your, down. Yeah. Your oh. daughter just did everything. Everything. Uh, Brenda did everything for me. Yeah. So here's, here's what I want to say. Hold on. Hold on. So we go to, he, he, he's boxing. This became like a big storyline thing, right? Huge. Yeah. Huge. Okay. Hold on. I want to make sure that you can still see me. Can you still see me? I, yeah, you're right there. Babe. I can't see me now. I mean, I'm up top when I'm talking. I'm not coming on the main screen now. I don't know what happened there, but. I don't know what happened either. You are recording. Got the little button going on and recording, so that's good. Yeah, we're recording, Kim. I just want to make sure that we're actually recording. Because I'm not seeing myself when I speak anymore. Oh, you're not? No. I see you perfectly. I'm just up top now. I'm not down below. We used to go back and forth, back and forth. Do you think it... Tommy messed it up? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. He messed everything up. What do we do, Kim? This is what happens when you're live and things are uh -huh. happening. And now we got to figure it out. And it's a mess. <laughs> is, it a, is it fixable, Theo? I don't know. Let's figure it out. I'm having some tea. Let me figure it out. Let me figure it out. Hold on, Kim. This is everybody's going to wait two seconds. Okay. Oh, everyone's going to wait. I mean, are you kidding me? They're on pins and needles already. They're all excited. It was excited. I'm, I'm waiting. You're waiting. I'm waiting. Maybe we should um, try to bring the Scotsman on quicker than, than later then. Maybe, I think maybe, we might have to. You know what I mean? Maybe. Like, see, see if it works. Yeah, I think we might have to. Um, <clears throat> I know where we are in the episode. Don't you worry. I know exactly where we are. We're at the boxing cell. Uh, Which I don't remember any of. None of it. Zero. Hold on. Let's bring him in and see what happens. And if anything, right. we'll throw him off and we'll start again. And we'll edit it together. Hold on. Yeah. Let me just see something. Let me just see. Is he still waiting? I think he's still waiting. There I am back. Oh, good. You got yourself back? I got there I am back. So something happened. Yeah, we brought him in early. Let's see if he if he knows. Does he know? If not, he's just gonna be there and wait while we do this because we have 15 minutes. 
Okay. That's, and no, and that's fine. That's really fine cool. Yeah. No, I don't we're like back. cutting and editing. I like the mania of it all. Don't I you? think that well, the mania you figured out the mania because we're back to manic you and me now. That's perfect. Right, here we are. So here's the deal. Let's keep talking while he oh, it's connecting to audio while he figures out what's going on. Because he's going to come in like a like a gangbusters. Yeah. Gangbusters. So we're showing half sack boxing, right? The storyline. Yeah. Uh, that was the storyline we were going with for a minute, right? And then um, the. I'm trying to figure out, and I'm going to ask him when he comes on. He he won't remember the episode, but I'm going to ask him, why was he the trainer? Does Chibs know how to box? All it's the biggest time? mistake that we ever, ever did. I mean, <laughs> Chib, Chibs back then knew how to drink. Yeah. He knew how to wear sunglasses. He had them in every yep. scene. He never every took them scene. off. I'm going to tell him that we're on because it's connecting to his audio. So you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to actually figure out his system while we're talking. So we're just going to keep talking. Uh, we'll keep talking until he comes up. Okay. That's, that's beautiful. All right. So, so we got this boxing thing with half sack. Um, he's doing his thing. And again, that's one of those storylines. I think they wanted to go with more. I think they wanted him to kind of be whatever, but again, we all know about, you know, kind of the, the dissension, I would say of the half sack character. We've talked about it multiple times in the future. We don't need to go into it. So now they say they found the three bodies from 92. Yeah. You got to tell me because you guys kind of tip your hat um, right away, but also you did something that was great. Your line readings on that, and I never, I don't like pointing out specific things, but yeah. you, the way you talked about 92 and what a wild time it was and how different was pretty amazing because, I mean, in hindsight, it is such a different oh, time, right? How truthful is that? Yeah, no doubt. A whole different world you're starting to get the impression at this moment that those are a problem, those bones, correct? Yeah, and, and I don't remember any of it. I mean, as I watched the episode, certain things came back to me, like little things, like the Gemini and Clay scene coming up, little things I do, but this beginning stuff, I'm like going, I don't remember any of this shit. I don't know why Lowell's here. I don't know who that kid is. I don't know why he's there, why we never used him again. So it's kind of fascinating. I'm, I'm truly, I forgot all this stuff. Yeah. Do you remember at all that it had to do with John Teller? No. Hmm. No. Because no. I don't know what happens. I, I, this is a big thing for me. At the end of the episode, I don't know what these bones have to do with John. I have something in my head that Lowell knew something about John or something, but, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I just know that Gemma and Clay and you know something that we don't. Yeah, I, I, I actually I can't put that together for you. That that Lowell's dad, who is part of the old bones with the two other Mayans in that pit that we didn't ever want people to find, but they did. He he was causing he knew what was going on with Gemma and Clay. He knew what was happening and he had, he had he had to be silenced because he was definitely on John JT's side. And so Tig, very young Tig. Um, youngish being being a very you know moving up in the club moving up in the club i took clay's side with everything and so he brought me in on that and i'm the only one who knew got it and and it just so happened because like someone said whoever said he's buried in those graves because there must have been two mayans that were being buried and at the same time put his body in there too just for like just uh, because it's easier to do that's it's right. easier to do okay. yeah but so okay um bobby says quarantine with cherry which is very random, by the way. But when he says we're going into quarantine, I thought it was kind of interesting. It, it, you know, I, that that is such a buzzword in today's world. Yeah. That when he said that, I was like, holy shit. Bobby yeah. just said the word quarantine in 2010 or whenever yeah. we were doing this episode. Well, 2012, yeah. No, 2008. 2008. 2008, bro. Yeah, you're right. 2008. Yeah. And it just was so interesting, you know, again, when you hear it, it's like hearing, you know, it's like I was watching uh, Princess Bride the other day and uh, Carrie Elway's character says, you know, with Andre the Giant, he says in the scene, like, why are you wearing a mask? And he says, I think everybody in the future will be wearing them. And I was oh like, my oh my God. God. Right? It's did they say so that? Amazing. did Amazing. in Princess Bride. And I just thought that's so interesting that, you know, again, so these things almost become, you know, it's like that movie Contagion, if you've ever seen it. So Bobby's going in with her. So Hale goes and sees Cara, uh, Tara. Um, 
telling her Cone is leaving. He's assuring her. Yeah. We're getting that feeling, right? That that this guy might really be gone. And it, even me, I knew I knew what happened in the future, but I had to. I'm getting roped in like everybody else. I'm like, does he leave and come back, or does he? I didn't know. Again, I didn't. I don't. Remember it's just a great. It's just a great setter setup. It's just a great setter setup. And what I was shocked about Theo was how much Hale was kind of trying to help Tara out. Really like a young cop, super flag, we call him. But like, he's not with Unser, really. He is, but he's not. He's certainly not with us, but he seems to help once in a while here and there. Uh, I, is I he found, anything for Tara? I don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, so. isn't that funny? I, I don't know. I, I never thought that. I don't, I don't think so. By the way, he's playing stuff. There wasn't nothing lecherous there, I don't think. He seemed to jump for her. More Quickly. than he's ever jumped for anybody. That's true. Ever. That's very true. So there could have been something in the backstory that maybe they were going to go to further if. Oh, that's so true, man. And they're about Taylor the same didn't... same age. And he was a paper boy and she became a sure. doctor on the right together. side of the tracks. Yeah, man. Good because point. Remember, he wasn't supposed to leave the show in season two. You no. know, that was never the part. That was, again, and I would say every character that I know of three characters that we're not supposed to leave the show. That's Half Sack, Hale, and Opie. Correct. Those are three that were not supposed to leave. They left because certain things occurred. However you take that is however you take that. They left because certain things occurred. Yep. There was definitely, when you're breaking down a seven-year arc of a show, there was definitely Hale's character in the long run. There's definitely, you know, uh, Hassack's character we know was in the long run and we know Opie I heard versions of the story where I, I literally heard this once that Opie was going to be the one to kill Jax like at the end last scene last thing like you know the brothers you know his best friend Hamlet whatever we're doing there if we're going towards that narrative the Shakespeare narrative um I've heard yeah and, and, Opie Opie was the Rosencrantz character they thought who was going to be there at the end in fact the only one to be there at the end really if you went who's who who's who who's Tig who's Clay we know who that is we know Jemmy is but no I think Sutter well he talks about it right Theo he goes I knew how to start and I knew how it was going to end but that whole middle stuff like Opie was supposed to be in the first season that's it out see you later and then they realized you know what do you want to stay we like what's happening here Ryan went I do. So they changed the whole, he was, he was supposed to be gone in that truck, not Donna. It was supposed to be Opie. Oh, wow. So that I, been, I, and that would have been interesting. That would have been a whole different thing for Tig too. Whole different thing for Tig, whole different thing for Stahl. It just worked out perfectly when Ryan said he wanted to stay. They were loving the shows the way they were going. They were loving the relationship between Jax and Opie. And that worked out. Look at how your character blossomed. Oh, Look how, crazy. you know, how we all ended or didn't end. I mean, I think, I think we did a pretty good job of keeping the characters we needed, but yeah, anyway, there you go. But that's something wild, you know, um, and I know we're still, you know, he, he'll be on soon, but one of the things that's wild that people don't understand about that show is it's a very odd thing to think, am I going to get killed off next episode? Like you would wait for the script and the first thing would be, and as we got later towards the seasons, you kind of, he would talk to you prior, but you really, there was zero job security. And I, I mean that in the way of like, you just never know if you're going to get that phone call where it's like, hey, it was awesome. You're going to go. And we've, I've, I had seen that so many times mm. building up. You more than me, for sure. Yeah. And You've I was done more so TV aware than I had. of it. Yeah, season four on, I was pretty aware, but I know you had some talks at one point. I know there was a moment, right? I remember it was actually at the end of the third season. Sutter said to all of us, all the leads, the 10 leads, we were all getting front billing, all that stuff. He would let us know at the beginning of the season if you were going to die in that season. He wouldn't tell you what show, he wouldn't tell you what episode, but if you were going to die in that season. So when season four started, which we're going to get into in April. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. um, we all knew that we were all going to live. Then season five came. Well, guess what? Someone got that phone call and it was Ryan Hurst. Crazy. And that started 
the evolution of deaths of the leads for the next three seasons, five, six, and seven. Piney went in what season? I think five. Maybe the end of four. Maybe. Holy crap. It might be four. Might be the end of four. Thing. Yeah, and we'll and we'll get there. But again, not not knowing that ever oh, is yeah. such a strange thing. Like it's such a strange thing that I think that I had when I did my next show, Luke Cage, like I had like for lack of a better term, and I don't use this lightly, like a PTSD of that. When I went into my next show, I was like, hey, oh, what, what, how long am I going to, like, what are we doing? Were you all loosey goosey? Were you all like, whoa, no, I was whoa. tight. I was tight. I was like, I definitely came out like a kennel dog where I was like, wait a second. Like, are you just going to tell me like the episode before that I'm not here anymore? And this, and they were like, no, you're one of the leads <laughs> of the show. Like, what are you talking about? I just, again, that nature sure. There was a Never great knowing. photo of you of shades on on Twitter last week. I know you oh, saw yeah. it. Stunning stuff, man. This artwork. People, is are, people are yeah. They're okay. Where artists. where is he? Okay. Can you go? Can you pull him up? Uh, don't worry about him. He'll come on. When yeah, he but what if, what if he's waiting? What if he's sitting there in he's the corner? He's not waiting. I see him right there. He's just got to hit his video. I'm not going to tell him what to do. He's a grown man. I'm going to text him right now. You text him, and I'm going to talk about this part. Yeah. So, would you talk about it? Go. So. Here's here's the deal. You guys are in the hospital, which is always jarring because you have no cuts on. I'm always jarred when I see you. Why guys did we even no take cuts. our cuts off? Because later we just kept them on the whole time. Yeah, I don't know if that's because you were about to do that weird stuff with the cold packing thing and all that, which is just beyond weird. But um, you guys yeah. do that. There's no cuts. Clay and Jacks are forming this plan. That's when we find out Cone's name is Joshua, which I'm always paying attention to that stuff. Um, this is the weirdest scene ever cone breaks into jack's house i would love to know how much of this was written how much of this was Karn's, how much of this was coming up on it putting on the music in the oh look at this no look at this. <laughs> tommy figured yeah. it out <laughs> boys wow. i've been running about the house like a maniac <laughs> trying to find it there are headphones. I can hear you two nutters in the background all through my house. <laughs> this is a big fucking house. I'm tired. <laughs> it, is, it is a big house, brother. Just oh. a wee point of fact, guy. When you're talking about who dies in an episode, which season, you're actually doing a show about it. Maybe you should do some fucking research. Yeah. A lazy bastard. You're waiting for somebody to tweet me the answers. Go to tweet me the answers so I can pretend I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, boys. Well, take a breath. Take, take a, breath. a breath. If I was wow. with you, we'd have a smoke right now, you and me outside. But I'm not coming in hot coats. Yes. Coming in hot oh. sun. Oh my what god. Is, we're we're Good all to see in you. the same state. We're all in the same state. We're not in the same place. Um, you sound you look great. You sound Tommy, great. You sound amazing. You look, a good you look amazing. Where's those glasses from? What's going on with you? They're actually Dina's glasses. I've got blue velvet on the front. They're really cool. Thank you, Dina, darling. Oh, uh, Dina! Still... Hello, <laughs> honey. Hey, hey D. <laughs> she just ran away. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi honey. Thank you, my hi, love. Guys. This is Stanley. Oh. This house is so big, you have to have a flask. Because <laughs> it's too... It's heavy to get a fucking kitchen and back. Yeah, it's, it's, forget it. It's, too, it's over. Just in case you got to hunker <laughs> down back there. you got to have supplies. I'm, I'm hunkered up. <laughs> <laughs> He's been oh, down for a year. A year. Stanley, the yeah. flask of sons. <laughs> Send me some. What's going uh, on, brother? How are you? What's going on, Tommy? Well, you know what, guys? Let's just say it. Fuck you, 2020. Fuck you, 2020. Fuck you, COVID. Mask up, you motherfuckers. Come on. Um, yeah. That was a rough year. I, I, I mean, I know we all had a rough year. But I mean, that was, wow. We were that close. And, you know, hallelujah. I, I know, know I know, I know, I know, Tommy, you told me uh, that, you know, you, you did that big movie in New York at the end of 2019. That was my we, we were all working and all, and then 2020 came along and it just stopped. Boom. It just stopped. Canceled. Unbelievable. I had my whole year mapped out and then boom, gone. But you know, now, now you've been you've been like 
you've been on full lockdown. You guys are like well, in it, just in the house the whole time with the animals, with the, which I can't wait to talk to you about because we just bought a, we just got a farm out in Austin. So we're, uh, we're going to start adding to the, yeah. You know, I want, I want to start with a donkey and a, and a zebra. Those are my, I two. got donkey for you. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting rid of that donkey, Flanagan. You can have my donkey, no fucking problem. <laughs> the eat and the shite. I said, I said, eat I shite, it. eat shite. Great. <laughs> I, I, mean, I just spend time you, with a bunch of donkeys. They got great personalities. I was just, we were down there yesterday, me and, me, me and Anjanu, and we, and Anjanu opened the gate. To, I think it's time for the, let them to run in the hills because there's been a bit of rain. All the horses all come flying out, the donkeys run. Uh, it's just fantastic. That's what life's all about. No, no, I mean, Isn't that uh, great? Uh, blessed. It's great. How many but, uh, how many animals do you have there? What do you have exactly? Flanagan's Ark consists <laughs> of <laughs> nine chickens, one parrot. We'll do the fowl and the birds first. Sure. Yeah. Nine chickens, one parrot, one cat, bird and a cat, one cat, <laughs> uh, two dogs just passed, little pick pickle of turkeys, the one at Maldew. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that dog was like 137. It was older no than fucking me. Dayton Carly. Yeah. That dog was <laughs> so old. And that's old. That's and really the, old. Uh, that was heartbreaking. So we lost two. So we're down to three dogs. Yeah. We have uh, four horses, a, a miniature pony, and and the fucking donkey. And the dog. Theo's donkey. <laughs> Just like, I can't wait. I'm going to fed the eggs, the fucker. I'm going to stick a <laughs> rubber. Well, I'll ride him to fucking Austin. I'll ride yeah, him. no. Yeah. When you're when you're done, you get him. Go get the donkey from Tommy and, and take him home. Take him to Austin. There you go. How, how, how long do donkeys beautiful. live? How long? What is the age? But ever me. Oh my god. We we had two. Charlie was going to buy a place up here, and yeah. uh, I remember and, that. Uh, remember the remember guys. It was June yeah. season whatever, yeah. and there was these two donkeys, and so yeah. we were going to see the house with Charlie and. And my wife fell in love with the donkeys, and then Charlie decided not to buy it. And guess who gets the fucking donkey? <laughs> this donkey, Uncle Tommy. So, yeah. So anyway, the, the old one, she was she was about God, I don't know. I, I, she's been in the community forever, so we had her for about six years, and she she couldn't walk anymore, back legs. It was so sad, man. Ah, oh, heartbreaking. So she went to sleep last year, and uh, yeah, that was you know. But How old is she? Do you know? I but thirty years at least. At yeah, least. horses and she donkees was, can last. They can last for sure. Yeah, a long Great time. Day. You you've yeah. got them for a lifetime feel. Yeah, especially those Canadian donkeys. They go oh, yeah. they days. last forever. It's Canada. Yeah, Canada. So, Everything goes in Canada. <laughs> so so, me, you and I actually did this show together in the beginning when it was before it was Reaper Reviews. You and I had our thing. We had this fucking amazing yeah. conversation and we kind of reflected on all the madness of it. But it's so funny since him and I have been doing this, we had never I, I don't think you really have either, like ever really sat down and watched the episodes like in especially. the <laughs> No, world, I've never. Yeah. No. And and there's a couple of things that I've noticed. First, we know nothing. Like we know, we remember nothing. For some reason, nothing. it's this Tommy, void. See, nothing. that's that, that. When I read, I read something. We're going to talk about season one. I don't even remember that year. I don't remember <laughs> anything. I, I don't know how I got a job after. I, I mean, are you still in the business after season one? As you two well know. Yeah. So talking about season one is going to be a very short conversation. So, you know, Flanagan, this, the one thing I know you'll remember, because I know we do, Theo and I, and we talk about this, is our trailers, our trailers. There were three bangers. And there was always you, yeah. Theo, and me. We were always in our, so I knew where you were. I knew where I had to pull you out of bed to come to work. You knew where I was, where I was taking my piss. Theo, you were always in the middle. Yeah. And so we knew where we were. You were, you were never shy about using your fucking toilet. No, no. Day coats. Yeah. No, I mean me. I, I would make sure you two left, going whatever. Yeah. Of course, fuck all. Just in there, not even a courtesy flush. Oh yeah, I left the door I mean, open. Yeah, sitting there, Reed, you can hear him fucking watching something on his screen, shouting about hockey or some shit, and <laughs> yes. and whatever. <laughs> no shame, Jim, the man. Coach, no shame. Coach, I live, I live in the woods, things. man. I, I'm Canadian. Coach, Coach always was on the phone. Always on the phone, always. and he always had visitors. There were always <laughs> visitors at the set. 
Uh, Where is my individuals? I, every, every week. They call me <laughs> me. I don't want to be anybody else. I love you, but fuck off. <laughs> Great. So, so here's what I remembered. This is this is the craziest part because obviously we're this gang of like character actors, but I knew Tommy right away because Braveheart, Gladiator were like the biggest 100%. movies on the planet. You 100%. know what I mean? Right? Was and it me? I remember Obviously. I remember when you came in, there was a point where you were wearing like leather hats and like leather pants and like really? a leather vest as the you remember that, Tommy? As chips. Oh, I, I had a few fashion footballs. As as chips. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. Chip. fuck, I remember, oh fuck, I remember the original idea. He was to wear leather chart pants wow. and he had a top hat, like, what's his wow. name? Who is it? Yeah, yeah. And the mad hair and the top, and I'm like, you your fucking mind. You see <laughs> people walking about Glasgow with fucking top hats on? Are you mad? <laughs> no, no, you look great, people will buy you. Fuck you, we on that shake. Yeah. You had, <laughs> you had like this full yes. leather look on. Like, and I was yeah. like, yeah. and. But, and I remember but, thinking, is this the choice they're gonna make? Because oh, this God. motherfucker looks crazy. And and there was all and, these and, things with the blades and the knives, and it was a whole was, different thing. It took three two three seasons, I reckon, before we actually got any input into our own freaking touches. I mean, 100%. it was impossible to change those stupid jeans and everything. That, we were making money, but not fucking, you know, we, we had a few quid. We should have more, more decent jeans at least. Yeah. And that used to bother me. Then in season three, we all started to get our own vibe on. It was like, no, oh, no, that, no, cool. to, no, Tommy, you're exactly right. I remember Kelly Jones. It was the start of season three. No, that was her fault. It wasn't her fault. I'm not no, sure. No, no, she did fault. a great no. job. But, but at the start of season three, we all had these meetings where Kelly went, do you, do you want new jeans? Do you want new boots? And I was just going, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and I remember Tommy, you had a whole thing. Booney got into this Western shirt look. I mean, we just got better, better. Yeah. We, well, we knew who we were a little bit more by then, I think. Yeah, we knew who we were. And uh, yeah, I mean. And I, I think we didn't, I think that by season three, there was less fear. You know what I mean? We're so far removed from it that we can kind of talk about it now because I, I reflect on it so many different ways, which I'm sure you do too. Yeah. I think that it I'm was saying. both the greatest time of my life now that I'm older and, and can reflect and also the most chaotic time of my life. Like at you agree the same with that, time, Tommy? You feel the same way? I mean, I, 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 I kind of walked from chaos into chaos, resolved my chaos while still balancing all the, I mean, I had a great time, but it was so much madness. And you, I mean, I got to say, this is why I have so much love for you guys. You, you, you were never alone in that whole period. And that no. period for me was, was very important to me. And I had good people around me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You guys, you gave me that encouragement. Season three, I come back. You looked at me, you were like, what the f did you do? Easy. I stopped drinking. Yeah. And uh, yeah, things get groovy. But still, that, that turmoil and the craziness that goes with being part of a show that's a big machine and there's so many opinions and this and that, whatever. It, it was difficult. Well, but and we, Tommy, do you, do you remember I how I thought we you... were fucking solid. I thought we were solid. And we were, which was great. So, I, and, and I remember you, Tommy, going through all that. Like, we were, we were already recognizable. But when Sons and you and Charlie and me and Theo and Opie and Ronnie, we all went for dinner every Friday, Booney, dinner, Friday, and TMZ, and cars would stop. And it became really, and I don't want to complain because obviously we did great work and we became brothers for life and what a successful show. But what comes along with that is recognizability. And it was hard for you, Tommy, because you're such a good guy. You're, you get the biggest heart in the business. And people wanted you, photo, but yeah. yeah. Us all the time. It was hard. all of us. It was just me. Yeah, it was you know. But uh, uh, yeah, that, that's yeah, uh, yeah. But that's not something we're going to. Not one of us will ever complain about because yeah. that's what we do. Right. That we've all got the same heart. You know what I mean. So that's right. all great. We'll do that all day long because it's honest and it's true and we are honest and true. So. Yeah, right. and I think that I think that the other thing that people have to understand and Coates and I have touched on this many times is this wasn't a six month show, even though that's what we filmed and were paid for. This was year round for us. Like we were together 
all the time. If we were going to events and signings and yeah, all dinners. the time. I was well, you guys more than my family for God's sake. We was from dusk till dawn and and beyond. Yeah, and then when you yeah. add on to that, now as the show starts getting watched by everyone, you're almost fucking with their reality because what happens is we walk into a bar or a restaurant and they're like, and we're on motorcycles, so they're like, what the fuck is happening here like they think it's real and, and, and it was always a brother the dl of like and, and, and little brother dl is leading the path he's yeah, yeah he's that was that's a good look that, that was always out i said can i the kind of the kind of look you want i said trains you want to say as you walk out there i love him bro yeah. oh we got nothing like yeah but uh, and that's why when you tell people even like when we went to like joshua tree at the end when opie got killed off and we were all together like we'd ride up to you know we'd go to dayton's house or we'd go to you know charlie's and everybody be hanging out or we'd go yeah. in the pool at dayton like yeah we're all together people would see us riding yeah tommy was yeah. always smart because he always wore the full face so he couldn't yeah. fucking tell it was him yeah if they knew yeah, it was plus you, you don't die with him on it's, yeah you know, keeps, they help you, keeps they you help more. your head you guys are always sitting with these little cashew nuts on your heads. I'm like, I think out your minds. <laughs> Especially you, when people... You, you, you know. went down, right? Really bad, and you stopped riding, but now you're riding again. Yeah, I've been doing a couple of times, son. To be honest, I get this. I get it. I, I thought I thought you were going to ride after that one by Malibu there, Tom. Yeah, thought. but yeah, you know, it's I, you, I, it's just, I can't help it. I love the thing. I do. It's my it's my little uh, yeah. It's my I, I just love it. It's my yeah. indulgence. Yeah. And uh, have you I, found I can it get... got more dangerous out there, like riding, like with people texting and all that? Is it more it's, dangerous? It's, it's it's obscene. It really is. I mean, I've seen Teslas auto drive. I mean, and they're texting. That doesn't terrify me as much as the clowns that are just. But it's all terrifying. It's just. Yeah. It's not terrifying. You do it, but um, I don't know. I try to avoid any traffic these days i like to just head off into the hills i'm more about the you know off road mm -hmm. not off road just something that will take me up a mountain if i want to go up one happily without listening to that <laughs> which i can't stand anymore yeah I that, that whole, you're on the bmw right so it's yeah, a little more it's, it's He's... just it's just such a cool bike man it's just i'll just get it. I, I don't worry. let's not promote the bastards until the pay is bmw yeah. we love you <laughs> we all want three back Chris, no, actually yeah. four. My boy John wants one. So, uh, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But it's funny when you came on, you were you because you were one of the first people on the show. Like you, I you knew about the show. I knew I'm known John Linson. Tell 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 the world, Tommy, about the movie you and I did over in Bulgaria. We were having breakfast one morning, and you said to me, Coatsy, have your people look for this show. Do you remember that, Tommy? This is that's how the story started. I was in the room next door to Coatsy. Coatsy had to be up early and he was tired. And I was making a bit of a ruckus, as I do in <laughs> hotels. Oh, as I did. Sorry, hotels. I'm really nice now. I used to make a bit of a, uh, a, a hullabaloo, uh, a bit of shenanigans <laughs> in the room next door. So um, Coatsy came banged on the door. Tommy, come on, man. We're all working here. I need to get some sleep. Sorry, brother. No problem. And then I tried to be quiet. Then I felt so guilty the next day. And then I went, oh, maybe if I say something nice. So I went, hey, Coachy, my boy's getting a show and you should get on it. And Coachy was like, hey, I'm still no fucking talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I phoned them. And then, boom, you can walk in onto the stage. I know it's not because of me. That was all you, fuck's sake. I'm just saying. But but it's amazing how little things connect. Did you mention it, Kim? Did you mention it to your people? Oh, of course I did. Of course, he was on the phone with eating I mean, sausages. It's I mean, sons of sons of um, uh, Peggy Bundy. I think I, it's called. I, I actually, of, I, I, I actually said cut I, don't about, remember, cut about I don't remember what it's called, but if Tommy Flanagan's on it, obviously I need to be on it. So f figure it out. Well, a year goes by, a whole year, maybe even more than that, Tommy. I'm not sure now. But when they sent a uh, an audition uh, to play Bobby or Clay, that's the two guys I read for. Didn't get either one, obviously. But then to be invited to the party after you guys recast, to know I was going to work with this crazy Scotsman, and to last seven years and to become the friends that we've become yeah. from it, those are the things, Theo, you just talked about that just happened. And when they happen and the stars align, we're just so fortunate. Was that the first that, movie you had guys done together before that? Yes. The movie. Yeah. And I, I, and I was, I was 
very irresponsible in those days. But anyway, there's a few things going on in my life and what. Remember, there wasn't happy times for me, Kimmy. I won't talk about that. I, shit, but, we won't talk. We won't but, talk but, about it. But you need to know, Tom, wait, that I, I had. But, I had your back the whole the whole time. Oh, someone had so the angels looked after the, me on that show in that time. country the whole time. Thank you, brother. But you know what was beautiful about the whole the whole show feel to me anyway was to finally when it when it ended up it was me and Coachy doing this little double act, and you know how fun it is working with this motherfucker feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I I loved that. I enjoyed the moments. Now, it was, it was the, as small as they may have been, but it was huge to me. And a little shortbread, fucking stereotype of bullshit. I didn't so, mind that. It so was good. fun and, and yeah. great, and, you know. And and it goes back to Theo. What we're talking about, season one here, Tommy. But uh, we, we we talk about this how the, the the show got more and more serious as it went on. Those first couple of years, there was humor. There was yes, there was all serious stuff too. But there was some humor in there that that we. Uh, that we ended up missing, but bringing back a little bit in that last season that Tommy and I had off camera more than on camera to tell you the truth. Oh my it, God. It got us through the whole, the whole show. I, Theo, I, you I, were I, really you, on your own. Sorry, Tommy. You were really on no, your no, own island in season seven. You had your own. Yeah, you were gone. You were gone. gone. You were Six, seven, or? boom. You I, lost your complete. I remember that, that there was a huge, there was like a void happened. Because you, void. You, 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 you removed yourself completely. Yeah. Because you're, yeah. that's, well, your guy, you had to take yourself out and take your character out. And I, I, everyone understood that. But it was so I, disturbing. I Kelly, had such that? a weird time because the people I worked with the most in the beginning was Kim, right? We did our little comedy act. And I, I was kind of a journeyman in the beginning. No one knew where I was going to be or who I'd be with. Then I started going to Clay. And then it was me and Chips for the yeah. rest of the ride. Like that yeah. was the deal, right? And obviously yeah. Gemma and I had our thing, but it was kind of, those were my three. Yeah. And, you know, Jax and I ultimately became enemies and I had not been working with you guys. And it, it, it was such a high school kind of thing. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way, like the way when you removed yourself, you missed stuff that was fun. Like, you know, you'd feel, oh, you should have saw what so-and-so did. And you're like, oh, I wasn't there. And then you kind of like felt that you were out of it and it was really helpful for the character. But what yeah, happened is right. I think, I think Tommy and I's greatest stuff came because the one thing that Chibs, what Tommy always does ever is he's so welcoming to people that yeah. if any shit's going on on the set, if anything's yeah. happening, Tommy's going to be Tommy no matter what. Yeah. So it 100%. was like, he was the glue. And then when I'd come back, his and I seen together were so real because I felt left out, you know, and, yeah. and, and Tig and I did the same thing, but Tommy was always the bridge. Right. And we remember with clay and stuff like that, what was going on with Ron. And like, there was so many, there was a lot of dissension going down and, but Tommy was always that guy. He, he just, you know, you're like the mayor, like the governor. And, and I'd come in and we'd have 100%. This, we'd have this incredible, juice longing to be in chibs kind of yeah. feeling a certain way and i think it read so well on the screen so i there was a couple of years where i felt like i only worked with tommy mm-hmm. yeah I, that's exactly it every because i remember i remember i especially remember being in griffith park when you tried to kill yourself yeah which, yeah. Was, which was a huge it was a huge night for you and they, and they and they, they just try to throw him under the bus. They just like, okay, go up there and bomb, and that's. Yeah. I'm like, no, that's no. Fuck oh, sake. That's so great. We got to bring this. We got to bring this to life. The guy just tried to kill himself for fuck's sake. Good for you, Tommy. Tommy. I remember you and then, doing that. And then the two years get into it, and and it, the, it was it was. Different. I mean, I feel it now. The emotion was there. It was real. Yeah. It was truth. Put it in fucking film that shit. And and Sorry. and you no. you fought so hard. I was not in a mental state to fight. Like I had, because I, I you know, like I always say in acting, and you know, if if Tommy, if you've ever listened to the show, all Kim and I talk about is how absolutely not. You are, <laughs> yeah, you don't. Uh, but this is, neither do I. <laughs> all we do, either do we. So all we talk about is how amazing you are. And the one thing that we always say is like the eyes never lie, right? Like you can fake the funk as much as you want on social media and PR and you could tell everybody yeah. in the world you're a fucking good actor but once you get in front of a camera the eyes don't lie right so the one thing about Tommy that I thought was so brilliant and I remember that day because I think we were in Griffin Park or wherever we were you 
they were rushing us, like really rushing yeah. us. And Whoa. You, it was a late night. It was like a Friday or something. And you, and yeah. you were like, this ain't fucking happening. Like, this is not yeah. happening. And then there was a part where you pick up the chain because I'm you found me on the ground. Yeah. And you pick it up and you were taking your time and taking your time. And the disappointment that was on your face like broke me because I realized what I had just done. Yeah, I just, your you don't sense do that. of dread and disappointment, you were able to let them hold on you and let them take their time because they were ready to just do like shot, shot, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah guess, guess go. And but that see that that night, that was your stage. That was your set. That was you were there to do your job. And that was it. Not, you know, we weren't fluff for the background. We were there to do our jobs. And by fuck, we were going to do our jobs. And I really yeah. I, I you know, and that's how the TV works. So it's a it's a machine. You ha you get your, you know, so yes. when when that popped up, there was no way I was rushing that. I was not gonna let them do it to you or do it to me. So yeah, yeah and we used to yeah. and we used to make the joke all the time. And it's not we're not talking out of school, but you know, certain people would get on there and they, they film a scene for six fucking hours and then we get on and we have six minutes and we're sitting there going, What what happened here, guys? This is an important Seriously. scene. And then you see it cut together, you go, All right. Bomb. But you know what? It's a successful show. So what the heck do we know? It's a successful show. And, and again, that's the politics that people don't understand about making shows. But if right. you don't stand up um, for yourself, and the one thing that you and Kim, you really I did course, it you, Sorry, end. sorry. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, I'm, a, I, I'm he's a kind of fro stroke. I'm frozen here. He's out of frozen. Right, so or he's your, taking a stroke. Kim, go down to audio. Go down to audio. Video. I'm taking that back. Just hit stop video and then stop hit it video. again. So it'll go off and come back on. Yeah, no, son, let me. Hit it again, son. How'd you make a full screen? We're going to try. Hang on. You're going to try, Ken. Stop video. You're going to try. Uh oh. Hang on. You might just have to come back into the. Oh, he's got to come back on. He can come back on. Do we, do we really need him, Phil? Do we need the guy? I mean, come on. We can hear him. Is it, see, Listen, those I'm, getting a, blues, I'm getting a donkey Still. out of this thing, so I'm good. Yeah, you son. Yeah, yeah, a donkey. Our name is Pepita. We're She's great. Me. So and we're gonna we're gonna join. We're gonna leave and then join again, you guys. Right, Sorry, leave and join. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so, join, leave. Join, leave. So <laughs> you look good, kid. I got oh, thanks, to say, man. Like I'm doing COVID this. Looks I'm good. doing this. This crazy. How you doing? How you? Oh, you show Thank God, son. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, that was rough so, here, man. Good. You got in a uh, bubble as well? I'm in a bubble in LA. Yeah, I'm in a full blown yeah. bubble. Um, I and, go on uh, end of the month. I haven't Hello? seen my family in a month. Hello. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Hey. There you go. Yeah, that was Brenna. Okay, cool. So Thanks, you haven't Brenna. seen your family for a month? We can cut no. this stuff out. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, right. I don't cut I, anything out. I just got to say, I heard, I heard everything you two knuckleheads were talking about. So good on you. And we got to get Tommy back. When we get to season four, when you guys well, go listen, to the yeah. listen to me. I, I'm do, I, end of this month. I'm doing the exact same thing as you feel. I'm going to a bubble in Chicago, and yeah. I'm in it until the end of August. So there's that. Wow. So anytime you guys want to grab a chat, <laughs> I'm sure oh, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be, yeah, there'll be down the to be down I was, I was going to ask you. You look like you're in a hospital ward or something. I was thought, is he just checking? <laughs> he's so paranoid about catching COVID. He's rented a ward. Near oh, someone, yeah. just so he gets immediate assistance. <laughs> Check the video. about Coatsy or me? No, you. Your background. You look like no, I, I am. You told I'm in a hotel. This in a is hotel, the only Thomas. place in the hotel room. This is the only room in the entire hotel that actually has light. It's it's like the tundra in here, and I'm. It's thank God it's a it's a really big room. I've been in two hotels since I've gotten here, but it's oh, God. freezing and there's no light, so I am in. This is like it's like a it's like a video that you're crying for help. This is a free <laughs> video, like you would say. It's a hostage video. He's yeah. crying for help. Yeah. Blank. S O S. Do the do the blank thing. Yeah, so yeah. We, this no. is me demanding money. Like, please send money <laughs> and they'll release me. This all right. So Flan Flanagan, listen, listen to me. Uh, I'm the oldest one of all three of you by far. Listen, by to me. far. Yeah. I know yeah. you're going soon. But look at how dark I, your Italian lo French yeah. locks are. I mean, yeah. I don't get that. I, I just don't. I don't get that. Yeah. I wonder how that works. Anyway, I Tommy, works. <laughs> I know you're leaving soon. Yes. And I know you're going away for this huge gig for a few, well, quite a few months. Yes. So uh, we will talk to you in, in where you're going. I'll keep it on the down low, but I'm so proud of you. 
I love Dina. I love honestly. I love your donkey. I love it all. Yeah. And and hey, for- Steel's donkey. Steel's donkey. donkey. Um, <laughs> My Bill of sales on that one, son. I've got to put a for, <laughs> for sale sign off an ass. There you go. <laughs> Thanks as you go, baby. All right, no, brother, brother, I love listen, you. We love you, Tommy. Love you guys, it's been a joy. Good All luck right, with brother. the show and Thank keep you. fucking nah. killing it. Nah. Do, some, do some fucking research. I mean, I heard you talk about Piney, which was the season four, <laughs> but it's season five. Oh, there was Piney. <laughs> Not a clue. Love you. See you Love soon, Tommy. Love you, buddy. Take it easy. Oh, Love you. God. Come on. Like, come on. <laughs> the best. Literally the best. There's no one, there's no like, one in on. the world like him. It's very odd that people, I, I wish that everyone can have a moment to go to a dinner and like enjoy their time with him because he's nothing but pure joy. And to see him uh, in those seven years of getting to know him so well go through many many things in oh, life man. that we all go through but that was yeah. his journey and to be along for that journey and see him pop out the way he has is uh i want to point out how your screen now says diana chapel which yeah. i love yeah which yeah. is great so it just My shows wife. that you really are either on the run from the canadian government because your thing <laughs> is changing constantly it's coatsy it's agent 644 it's diana chapel i'm not sure who you are at this point i, have I a new name. swear Mine to you is agent i hate Sunshine. this fucking show i hate doing this show i don't <laughs> like you i can't handle it and no i well i mean but i can't do this shit i, I don't know how to do this stuff i well, feel like not, bank tellers you're not technologically advanced savvy at is, all you're not sa- i don't even want to say savvy because you know a little you know how to tweet mm. you do tweet Right, I do. You write, you write your own tweets. And I do. You tag, you tag yourself sometimes. Yeah, that wasn't that funny. When you called me yesterday and said, "Do you have rocks inside your head?" And I went, "Why? <laughs> what I do now?" And then when you told it to me, and I went, "Oh, I know, but I couldn't quote something on top." He goes, "Just erase it. You I just tag yourself." It. Like delete I went, "Okay, tweet. fine." Delete the tweet. So, okay, so we're gonna get right back into it. Come I on, let's finish you. this up. All right, you ready? So yeah. we know that Cone, here's what I want to start with. Cone breaking into that house, man, is fucking weird. Um, here's what I want to know. Yeah, what the fuck he, was that about, man? He puts on the kids' music, which is fucking weird, right? And that's the first thing. <sighs> then he looks around and he pees on the floor. On the like floor! He's marking his territory. Like a dog. Like a Like an inside dog. dog. He doesn't, he's not trained. You want to talk about how to make yourself hate someone? That was it, right? Oh, and you, um, and, and that's right. And you said this a couple of shows ago, Theo. You went, I could be wrong, but I think Cohen was like our, our bad guy for season 100%. one. And he sure, it sure is. Yeah, they, we had multiple villains, but he's, he's the bad guy, right? Awful. We're getting, we're getting pretty late in the season. He's the bad guy. Uh, then it, then it ends, and we go to our second bad guy. You know, which right. is, is it uh, Alvarez and them? It's it's the second season is Zobel. No, it's no, all, the end oh. of the first season. Oh, sure. Who knows? Or is We're it gonna... Clay and Jax? Because Clay becomes the bad guy. Well, well, yeah, the whole Donna thing. Yeah, man. Oof. All right. Anyway, all right, come on. The Donna thing. So okay. Here we go. So um, you and Clay are with the corpses. Um, okay. So I I'm just gonna... tell yeah. me about this. I will. That's so weird. When I when I when I I'm just gonna say this that when I read the script, and the cold packing thing comes up. I said to myself, you are about to play a guy that you've never, nor will you ever play again. The colors and the weirdness and the psychology and the psycho and the funny. I, I'm telling you what, Sutter, when he told me before the season started, come along on this ride, you're going to be this, 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 this. Well, I read that and I went, uh, that's something you never mentioned, but here we go. And for me, that scene, it was very Shakespearean. It was very, it was just weird. I don't know what to tell you. Just weird. And that's something we need to talk about. You and I had a phone call recently um, on the last movie I did that we just finished. And I was having a hard time because he was such a bad guy. Remember? Yeah. I'm and I said it. that um, you shut that in I'm LA. a tough time. I don't know if I should do the movie. Yeah. He's a bad guy. You and I, obviously, this is no surprise, play a lot of bad guys, right? Yeah. Um, which is so odd, but we do. And that's fine because we get to, 
That's we why do we them well. We do our comedy stuff. We and they're it. the best written parts usually anyway. So Sure. Always, because we always say the villains are limitless. They're boundless, right? Where heroes are bounded by an, a, a code. Um, sure. he, villains are not. So, but sometimes you have to wrap your head around because to make it believable, you got to yeah. believe it yourself. You have yeah. to get into this, for lack of a better word, sociopathic state of like, why would this person do that? Why is this happening? Let me, I'm going to be and exist as this person for a little while. Um, and I called you and had this hard, hard time. And, you, you know, what we came to the conclusion of is that obviously you're playing a character and that's, it's not as simple as that, sadly, you know, cause you got to believe it, but it's also the fact that they don't think they're doing anything wrong because people who are bad people don't wake up every day and go, man, I'm a bad, I'm person. a bad person. I, gotta, I, I can't, can't live with I myself. Do this again. No. They don't do that. They get up and think what they're doing is right. Right. When I saw that scene with Tig, I'm like, this is just who Tig is. It might be weird to the outside world, but it ain't fucking weird to Tig. This is who he is. And, and what? And, but later, what I and, and what I loved about it is he told Clay straight up, "Have you ever? Well, you should try it. And I'm going to tell you. Like, so he's not. Oh, I was caught touching a a dead person, or I was caught. No, no, he's. It's like he's recommended a restaurant on Yelp. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah, you should try. It's so weird. So. Again, I, I, I anyway, love those little things that yeah. build the character. So now we got Boone cooking, making cookies for Cherry. Uh, he's making I, his move. I, 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 ha I just have to say that when Clay tells him and, and uh, tells him exactly what to do, what he's going to do for the club, Booney was so good in that scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's brilliant in that scene. He goes from offering a cookie to a hand on the, he, testing her, testing her. She doesn't know that, but testing her. And I thought Boone was just, until he got smacked, brilliant, beautiful. I, I thought it was awesome. And I think what I loved is in that scene, they're towing that line of like, he knows that he wants her to say no. He, they want her to show her affection for half sack. So Correct. he's doing it. And at the same time, if it didn't go that way, he'd kind of be happy too. He'd right? be happy too. Wow, win-win. Win-win <laughs> for Bobby. So that was kind of cool with the cookies. Again, we're showing Bobby used to bake, bake and do all that kind of yeah, stuff, right? That's um, right, man. Jack's questioning about Lowell. We start to see something is afoot. Something is not right. That's right. right. And it's it's I, I call it the clay watch with Jack's. I mean, he's back on that. Hey man, what the fuck's happening here? Dad, what's going yeah. on with you? What's happening with the club? Right? And this even is, when it goes away for a minute, it comes back. He goes, goes back. back to the journal. Yeah. He goes back to yeah. reading John's stuff. He goes back to kind of like, you know, it, it comes back. <clears throat> Every time you think they're cool, something happens and it goes back. Yep. So now we got Clay going to talk to Lowell. Um, I'm convinced because I knew the actor. He was from a movie, <clears throat> uh, Bridesmaids. Uh, no, great. I'm sorry, not Bridesmaids. Don't listen to me. Wedding Singer. No, he was great to me. as Lowell. Wedding Crashers. Wedding sure. Crashers. Yeah, I knew you'd figure it out eventually. I got there. Three I don't watch anything, so I don't know. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. So but. he was in a movie, uh, Wedding Crashers, and, and he was wonderful. And the movie was enormous. And when he came on, um, I think he was supposed to have a much bigger role. I think so too, bro. So I'm going to guess if you remember, and I only know this because I was a guest star the first year is when you don't lock an actor in, you have the chance of losing them. If they get a job that pays more and is better because they're still auditioning, they're not surviving off a guest starring salary. So they have the chance to get something else. And then, they, then what they do is they give, if they're a good person, they say to the show they're working on, hey, I have this offer would you like to lock it up? You know, their agents and managers say, would you like to lock me into a contract, whether it be a six episode, a five episode, a 10, just a guarantee, because then I have guaranteed money and I don't have to go take this job. My assumption is he got offered something and it blew his whole storyline, whatever they had planned got blown to the side because I don't think we've ever seen him again after that. No. Is that, okay. No. So obviously if you're going to put that much effort into a character, and then you're going to get him away. Um, it's funny what I noticed in that scene. I and you have done the same. I've done a lot of crying in scenes. 
Clay is approaching him. What's funny is you might do six takes of your coverage. Yeah. You cry six times. Yeah. But you have to reset and do it again. So if they use take number four, your eyes already look puffy and you look like you cried. I noticed that when he started, I was like, oh, he definitely, the second I watched him, the camera go to him, I go, he's, he just did this. He, he, cause I could tell he's going to cry because his eyes are already red and they kept it. That means, you know, they didn't either redo the makeup the right way or his eyes just got super puffy because he's light skinned I'm, or whatever. I, I'm so glad you brought that up. I need to talk about this now. So Entourage, I did a guest star in Entourage. I did yeah, two great. or three, maybe four it's shows. Great. They brought me back for the final season because they wanted to bring me back. And I said, I would only come back if you wrote me something really, really good. Like really, really good. I when I read that scene, I mean, blow my brains out as that producer. When I read that scene, I, I, it, it scared me. My point being, before we started any of that stuff, being high on coke, being high on what that character was, I made sure makeup already had red, a uh, little bit of blue, a little bit of lots of lots of menthol in my eyes to get them that clear, clear, drugged out look because I didn't know where any of it was going to go. So I made sure at the beginning, that's what they did and they did. And I had no idea what I was about to do. And it worked because, we, and I think that's what this kid did. I think he got makeup ready to go and he started crying and all of a sudden he's on drugs in that room. Did you feel that yeah. feel that, that he was kind of high? No, this is crying. the part in the garage. This is in the garage. Oh, not even the big one. Oh, yeah, we're not even early at one. that yeah. spot yet. And the reason it works oh, in, the, in the hotel okay. room is because the room's darker. Yeah, and he's on it, stuff and he's- It was, it was yeah. the problem is he was outside and he was going from, it would be like you and I talking right now and I start crying and then we go, hey, let's do it again. But my face is already a mess from oh. crying. Yeah, I didn't. So, I didn't know, notice that in that scene. Good for you, bro. I didn't notice yeah, that. So yeah, it's those little things that. Yeah. It's weird. Um, Clay telling him. Clay is basically threatening him in that scene. He's basically telling him to keep quiet, right? Yeah. Um, Jax is on the roof reading, knowing something's up, right? We got those beautiful images of other people while and, Jax is on the roof. And and this one was perfect for the timing, of uh, you're telling a good lie. Like JT talks about telling a good lie in the journal and Jax is looking at Clay, yeah. who he knows is telling a good lie. It it's exactly so, what, right? And then we saw Lowell hitting something in the back. It was, they'd never really done that before. We're on the roof showing stuff in the, in the background. No, oh, that's true, man. That's very Super true. Cool. Super so, cool shot. Gemma finds the room, steps in oh. the urine, sees the pictures. Chaos. Chaos. Absolute okay. chaos. It's her family's baby's room. It's where the baby will come to when he gets out of the hospital. And now there's piss. Like, what the weird? And and pictures of him having sex, you know, with someone else. And you know, there's all these like this collage of crazy pictures yeah. and that comes and broke, and yeah, broke up the room again. Violated. I've been robbed. Right. I got robbed. I had a house when I was in school. I got robbed once or twice. Maybe twice. Well, I've been robbed. My car has been broken into a bunch, but I got robbed. Like my Mona slept through the whole thing, which was fucking amazing. Um, he was out of his mind. He was back when we were young. He had a birthday last home. week. I wished him happy yeah. birthday. Fucking yeah. love Mona so yeah, much. Go ahead. But I came back. And again, there's a thing that you feel that it's funny, the human reaction to it is like, and anybody Violated. know this, who's Violated. Been, oh, oh, and my house got broken into when we were kids too, but I didn't really remember it. I think it was like five or six, but I was like, what the, you're trying to figure out like, what, what? You don't even think, is there someone still there? You're like, what? And the way she played that was so great. Cause it's like, you almost, your mind has to register it for a yeah. second where you're like, yeah. what? And you know, like last, I remember a couple of times ago, I was in LA and I had a rental car and I parked it. I literally went in to get a haircut. I was gone for like 20 minutes. And I came out and the window was smashed and my bag was gone. And I was like, Awful. what? Like, what? Bullshit. What do you, what? Punks. Who? What? And again, I think that she played that so well and not just, okay, someone broke in. Are they still here? There's urine on the floor. <laughs> what the fuck? So super, super cool that she finds that Stall and Hale getting into it all. They're questioning Lowell. That was a great scene where they're questioning great. him. 
Um, Great. And I, I, and I noticed Allie does this incredible thing where she, <laughs> yeah, like that early ancient yeah. breathing that she had yeah. going on, whether she did it on purpose or just wanted to. What a choice. Just, what a choice. And it fucking drives me nuts. Like, good for her. We also come to find out that's on his first time meeting stall. He yeah. walks in the room. Um, he basically breaks up the party. And, and again, this is when Unser was really on the sun side. 100%. So Jackson, Gemma, um, Jack, this is a great line. Jack says to Gemma, I'm going to fucking kill him. Yeah. And she, oh, he doesn't say fuck because we weren't allowed, but I'm going to kill him. And she says, at least. Yeah. At least, like killing might not Good even be enough. No, it's not enough. <laughs> no. That is such Do a great it, line. Son? I'm going to give you permission to hurt him a little bit before you put a bullet right in his head. Go right ahead, son. I won't tell anybody about it. That's amazing. That's so, so again, that's when you really see Gemma and what she is and who she is. You know, you're starting to really build that character. He goes to Floyd's. There's a brawl. I, I got to ask poor Floyd, right? Who's fixing the window? <laughs> Who's fixing the window? Michael. This guy doesn't he, have a lot of money. He had the greatest time on, because he knew whenever we had him in the barbershop, shit was going down. Damn. We weren't there to have a haircut. We're there because shit's going down. And that that was quite the scrap. And I, I, I really, I, I replayed it a few times, Theo. And I got to tell you, those boys did 90% of that fight themselves. They did. There was rare that, you know, that was not Charlie, that was not Cohen going through the window, but they did 90% of that themselves. And it was on. It was great. And you know you how, something. sorry, one more thing, Theo. He says, Cohen says, Tara, not Tara. All the time. That drives me. It, it's got to be where you're from thing because uh, it's like, it's like my wife's name's Megan and a lot of people call her Megan. But you know what he did? You know, you know what he did? I know he did this. He talked to Sutter and said, how do people, and Sutter went, Tara. He went, Tara, uh, because it was his special, she's my doll. She's amazing. my girl. I call that's her what her he one. did, and he kept it, and he never changed it, and it freaked me out. I'm going to tell you something about the actor who plays Floyd. Uh, I believe his name's James, right? James is the best. He's the best. Okay. I'm going to tell you something that I think is so amazing. And maybe it's because I love watching old movies. Um, one of the He's hardest the things, one the of the hardest things for an actor is to do nothing. Yeah. To do, to just, to be minimal. Actors always feel the need, you know, this to do too much. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you, all you want to tell them is just stop. Like no one does that. Yeah. Floyd was so amazing at doing certain things in that scene. Yeah. His face never changes. He's no. got the same look. He just takes a step back. Like here's Jax and he just takes one step back knowing that it's about to get ugly. Yep. As opposed to maybe a lesser actor is like, no, no, no. or puts James Carraway. James, James Carraway. Carraway. That Floyd motherfucker. Loved him. He looked like he was out of an old Western. Like if you were in an old oh, West and a gunslinger again. walks in a bar, yeah. he would be one of those guys that literally is the guy who steps back. Your uh, screen's frozen. I'm, I'm frozen again, Theo. So yeah, I might really, have to leave I again. I have to ham, ham and egg this thing. You have to leave and come back. Oh, God. Look, now I see her name. Just a minute. Hang this on. Is, this is like, I am the only one who has my shit together on this show. I, you know what? Can you still hear and me? I could hear you. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally not going to come. I'm not using this computer ever again. I swear to God. I'm going back to my phone. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Just log out and come back. Hang on. I'll be right back. I will talk. This is, this is, listen, I don't know what to tell you guys. I just want you to understand if you're watching the video of this, this is what I deal with. He's not on to hear me right now. It is like coaching my five-year-old. And I got to tell you something. My son came. He's really good with uh, technology, you know, probably much more. Um, I will say this, having Chibs on, having Tommy on, it's crazy that we all still call each other by our character names. Um, and I think we always do. What, that's, by the way, that's not a thing that we do when we're on 
like I always call Chibs Chibs. I always call Tig Tig. I always call Jax Jax. I call Ron Ron. I call Katie Katie. Bobby, I definitely call Bobby or Booney. Booney, I guess I call him Booney. Emilio, I call Emilio. So it's kind of like half and half, but Opie, I definitely call Opie. Um, but it's really interesting. So here's Tig again. Look, there we go. You're back on. I'm not doing it. That's it. This I'm not is doing the it. Last of that computer. You're never going to see am, this room again, ever. I, I just want to know go to your seventh room that we've done of this show. <laughs> They're going to have this might be the first show we ever have to edit because that yeah. fucking computer is not disaster. doing it. Okay. I'm on my phone again. I don't care. Agent 644 is back. I'll never do this Good. again. So Come on. St Stalin Unser. Yeah. Jax is great in that scene. Stalin Unser. Um, the whispering is in full effect. Jax is sitting there getting questions. Stall is everybody's yeah. great. It's Everyone's great. great. It's the beginning great. of that stall love hate thing. Yeah, man. It's great. And that there's their first kind of like real interaction yeah. that's going to build for fucking however many years, three years. Um, <laughs> what, what a great moment uh, on great. that. So now here's the big boxing scene. We've talked about this multiple times. We've done a bunch of these episodes now on those nights with hundreds of extras. Tell me. And, and here's Tommy, the beautiful Flanny Flan who we just had on the show. Yeah. Refuses to take his sunglasses off. I can't see him. He can't see me. He can't see the fighter, but he refused because he's flanny flan. He's just, I'm wearing shades all night long. Um, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember any of it. I must have just blacked <laughs> it out of my mind. Like, what are we doing there? Why is Chibs yeah. the trainer? That makes no sense. Yeah, you remember uh, none of it. No. Isn't that interesting that there's these big scenes with hundreds of people on this big show? It's season one, and you go, no, I don't remember a fucking thing. No. Nope. And and here's what I remember about it. I was watching it and I wrote this later, but there's a Lumpy's Burger sign above the ring. It says wow. Lumpy's Burger. Wow. Lumpy's Burger. It's like a restaurant. So obviously they had in their head Lumpy before season three, Lumpy's Boxing, but yeah. apparently Lumpy also owns a burger shop. Yeah, so you, he does. Okay. He does. And it was very successful. Yeah. It was very successful, I guess. We never Hale went there, but very successful. Yeah, we never, but Hale might have took it. So <laughs> Jax followed Cone out of town. I thought that was kind of a cool movie. He's following the car. He's, uh, you know, he stays next to him until he actually leaves Charming. Um, Tig Gemma Clay scene. Uh, old stuff coming up. Gemma's pushing all the buttons, telling you guys what to do. Yeah, look, this is a great scene, not because I'm in it, but it tells so much with doing so little. When Tig watches, walks into the two of them, the look that Gemma has with me that Clay doesn't see tells everything. Then what Clay says to me in front of Gemma tells everything. The three of us, I mean, I know so much about history with Clay. I, 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 think, I think I was never really privy Tig was never really privy to how John Teller left or what happened to him, really. I think that was a massive secret between the two of them. But I'm not an idiot. Tig's not an idiot. And um, I just love this scene. With, with very little said, yeah. it tells a lot. I think, I believe in my mind as a fan of the show now, bigger than I've ever been, I think that there's an alternate version of this show where you basically have two factions where it's like yeah. Gemma Clay, yeah. Gemma Clay, Tig, you know, yeah. whoever else they recruit. And Opie's kind of showing where his, his alliance is oh. going to be. Like you could have this infighting. Oh, no, I, no, I was, I was just going to say that you're right. There, there was the Jax, Piney thing going on. Tig, Clay thing going, you trying to figure it all out. Opie still wants to be part of the club, but loves Jack. Loves Clay and loves Freaking Clay. Booney. He's the secretary. He's like the old guy who needs to chill everyone out. And then Tommy was just a wild card, a complete. Yeah, I think I think Booney maybe because Booney was so close with Charlie in real life that I think he always wanted to be over there. But I think that in, right. in hindsight, if I was writing the show, Booney would have been with Clay and them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you would have kept more of the younger guys mm -hmm. over with Jacks, and you could have had this like really 
kind of infighting thing. Again, alternate universe could have been a totally different show. So Clay goes to find Lowell. Um, he finds him in that hotel room. What a fucking scene that is, by the way. It's a Oof. great scene. Great. Talk, talk about emotional and talk about past ghosts coming up. Talk about the, the dialogue and, you know, again, we, we, we never went forward with it, right? Like Lowell was so upset with what Clay had to say. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a freaking brilliantly acted scene right now. Oof. But why is he so, so upset? Like the, his dad's been gone for 15, 16 years. Why is he so upset that he's finally found dead? Like, I don't know, man. Yeah, I think that the only way I can rationalize it, because I thought the exact same thing, is that one, he's a drug addict. He's got, so he's got addiction problems. So his emotions are in a very different place. Than Good point. Most, Good you know, point, man. Your, Good point. Your emotions aren't rational when you're. Good in point. No, that's a fucking great point, bro. Right. That's number one. Number two, anything can break the camel's back. And I know this from, you know, a couple of people I mentor and, you know, it's, it's not a secret. I, I haven't drank in 11 years or done anything. I also understand that you always wonder, could it just be one little thing that snaps someone? And you don't know why, like, you don't know why. So you're almost like, what, what could it be? Right. And for him, it was the fact that he was lied to Yeah. for yeah. whatever reason. And maybe he concocted in his head, maybe my dad would have came home and he yeah. would have been the best dad. And yeah. No, good had, point. Had, we would have played ball together. So that's why I think he kind of flew off. Um, we go to that quick Jackson Gemma scene, you know, she's always inserting herself, doesn't want Tara around. We kind of know right away that she has this problem. Um, we get back to the boxing. Half sack doesn't throw the fight because he, no. which is a cool little twist, right? Um, I forgot it all. I forgot it all. I forgot Clay coming that night. I forgot that I was still there. I forgot that he's going to throw the fight, but he doesn't. I forgot it all. Really cool. And then what I really love is when you get in the van and you see Lowell back there, it, you, you like I, expected that Clay was going to kill him. And yeah. I got to tell you something. Whoever came up with the idea with the pillow in the room to put the pillow yeah. near yeah. his head yeah. uh, as a silencer, fuck, yeah. man, that's brilliant. Right? That's brilliant. No, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And, but when you see him, your face is kind of like, wow. Mm. Why? I, <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I remember that. I remember that oh. scene. Wow. I remember having my little fun with the kids out front. And then I remember that scene in the back of the van. I remember, but, but again, as a character, you, you go, okay, great. So I can process this, but then where do we go with it? And we never yeah. really went anywhere with it. We never we went just, anywhere. That, that, again. that locomotive just kept going straight forward in Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, somebody could probably write a whole thesis on the loose ends that would never oh tie up on Sons. Oh my God. There's so many. Don't get me and, started. Uh, yeah, and that's not for, again, that's scheduling, that's time, that's this. You know, we talked about the underwear in last week's episode. There's so many loose ends that never get tied up. They come up and then they don't get tied up. And I think that I, sometimes as a viewer, because I'm so aware of everything, literally everything, that I'm like, whatever happened with You don't that? sleep at night, you're so aware of everything. Oh, I sleep peacefully because I, I don't watch anything. Yeah. Hyper-focused. <laughs> um, so Jack's Tara scene, he's questioning her intentions. He takes Gemma's energy and then yeah. literally goes with yeah. her yeah. and is like, are you just with me because I beat people yeah. up and do this and do that? Um, which is, you know, fucking great because it always shows the influence our parents. It's so funny how people in life, this has, this might not even have anything to do with the show. Do you ever notice that people could like literally put these, uh, time bombs in your head that you don't even think you're getting. So the way I think about it is like this, you wake up, you're in the best mood. You just haven't, you're like ready to conquer the day. The sun is shining. You're like, Oh, I feel great. Then you get on the phone with someone who's just bringing you down, bringing you down, right? Bring you down. And you, because you don't want to be like, really? Oh, I'm having the best day. You match their energy. So you're like, yeah, I get it. It's crazy. Right. Whew. COVID this, that fucking world. Oof, yeah, I know, man. It's just, and you match it. And then you, as you hang up the phone, the next person who calls you might be in a good mood. And now you're the Debbie Downer who gets on the <laughs> phone with them. And, and you're like, why did I do that? I was in such a good mood. And you can't avoid negative energy. But we, what we saw is a classic moment of Jack's taking Gemma's energy and putting it on to Tara. Oh. So then 
I thought that was going to be the end. I thought we were going to see the Reaper. But no, we go to Clay and Gemma's bedroom and they kind of dance around. Old something. bones. Yeah, they're, they're, they're dancing. There's a lot of old bones still out there. That's what I took from it. There's so many, so many questions that are unanswered right now. The, the audience now, this is the, what, the seventh show of 92? And we are flying around everything right now. Like, like is Jax going to be with Tara? Who's the cone guy? He's out of town, but he isn't really. We're with the Irish, but are we? We're broke. Um, what's his name? Throws the fight in the wrong way. We lost 70,000. Yeah, I mean, half sack cherry. I mean, that's a big relationship that they probably yeah. were going to expand on. You know, that was another thing that you thought, oh, they're going to expand on this. It's going to be them too. Maybe they're going to be the, the uh, yeah. Lila Opie. Maybe they're yeah. going to be like, yeah, know, man. Together. Opie's not in the episode either, by the way. Juice and Opie no. aren't in the episode. No, and 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 here we are. We we you know we 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 know what happens to half sack, but we still see Cherry in season three over there in Ireland. We sent her over there because we love Taryn so much. Yeah. We needed to keep her around for a while and see what's going to happen with her. So it's so nuts. So hey, we just did our first guest. Next time we're going to have to do some kind of tech check. We didn't do any of that because you know we just fly by to see. You will kids. never see me in this location again. No, you I've should had. Probably you should probably take the entire thing that you're on right now, walk out your front door, and just throw it in the middle. I'm going to throw this computer out. I've had. Or you should get like a good Wi-Fi. Well, we actually haven't. Brenna said we've been having a little trouble with the Wi-Fi. Well, so that, now that Daddy's home, now, it's good to know that we're on this, and that's when yeah. You're in trouble. Good thing it, yeah. Hey, listen, well, you, I, you know how much back. I love you. I'm going to say goodbye before I freeze again for Christ. Get out of here. I love you. Love you. You're the best. Tommy, we had him on, Theo. Big shout out to Chibs. Big uh, shout to Chibs. All right. Love you. Get out of here. Go get a computer.